Hello everyone, this is Sue from Sue's Paper Creations. My name is Sue Phillip and I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Canada. Um, today I wanted to create for you this adorable little barn door that actually functions, slides back and forth. And to do that, it is going to feature our barn door uh, bundle. So that includes the barn door stamp set. And then you've also got the sliding door framelit. So this is this um, will create all the sliding pieces, all of your hardware that you're going to need to put on your door as well as cutting out your door and accents to cut out all of these adorable little extras that you can use to decorate. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple samples and then we're going to get started and I'm going to actually create a different sample for you. But this is one that uses some of the sayings from the actual stamp set and the wreath that's on the door. You can see how that just slides back and forth. Uh, I've got this uh, cute one that I decided to bring in um, from Bird Banter, that adorable little toucan. And again, it slides back and forth. I stamped the door actually on with the um, Wood Textures DSP. So imagine the possibilities that you would have in all the different colors of wood grain that is in that pack of paper. You could have some really beautiful doors, okay? So that's just the whitewash piece. And then... If you really want to get creative, this is a double barn door. Isn't that awesome? So this one here uses just a larger piece of cardstock as well as a card base. And I've just extended the track and put on two doors instead of one. Um, I'm going to show you how to do the single door today, but I will do a video on the double door coming up soon. So uh, if you want to subscribe, then you won't miss that video on the double door. But this is super cool doing this one. I just finished actually doing uh, a couple classes today on the barn door and everyone came up with some really cool ways in which you can decorate those doors. Now, all the um, supplies that I'm going to be using are Stampin' Up! supplies. So I do have a website here. If you go on there, you can click the shop now and it will head right over to my online store. You can place any orders using the host code. If it's over $200 though, you want to um, keep those hostess benefits for yourself. If it's under $200, pop in this code and then I'm going to send you a little gift in the mail, okay? I'm also going to put your name in my In It To Win It um, draw if your order is $60 and you have a chance to win a big shot or a full set of Stampin' Right markers. Okay, so I'm going to get started with all the different pieces. There is some things that you're going to need to purchase to be able to create um, the door. So some added supplies other than your stamp set and your framelits. You're going to need some mini um, stamp and dimensions. You're going to need some foam adhesive strips. So we sell these in packages of two. So you can actually make a lot of um, barn doors out of these. But these are awesome to have. Even if you're doing Eclipse or Shaker cards, these are really, really awesome. So um, you're going to require those. You're going to require the mini dimensions. And then you're going to need to head to your local hardware store. And you're going to want to pick up one eighth washers so these are number uh, or they call them number eight washers but these are the perfect size for what you're going to need to have the mechanism of your sliding door so you're going to need a bunch of those um, I, I went in there yesterday I think they thought I was crazy I bought 500 just to do all my classes and uh, I'm sure they're calling me the crazy washer later now because I kind of bought them out of the local store down the road Anyways, uh, you can find them at uh, any hardware store. Okay, so I'm going to get started with uh, my card and I'm going to show you how you can cut out the different slits here and the position of them. When you go and use your um, framelit, this is the piece here that you use to cut the tracks that the doors are going to slide on. You want to make sure that you take your piece of paper and you actually have it down towards the bottom of your piece of paper, okay? You want the framelit down here so that it is going to give room for your rod to go across the top, okay? So you want a little bit of extra room up there. 
for your rod to go across the top. So just shift this framelit down a little bit, run it through your Big Shot, and this is what you're going to end up as, with is the two tracks. So it um, does all the work for you so that they're perfectly placed. Now I wanted to have a textured wood side of the house. So I brought in our dynamic wood plank textured embossing folder. I popped this in there and I ran it through the Big Shot. And this is what I got. So now I have just stepped it up a little bit. So if you want to add that extra step, you can add texture to the side of your house. Now, if you wanted to, you could also use, like I did in this one here, you could use our huge background stamp, which is the hardwood. And that looks beautiful too. So this is just stamped tone on tone. And again, it gives you that really cool wood look for um, the side of the barn or the house or whatever this ends up being, okay? So it's just a way to step up your cards a little bit. All right, so I have got all the pieces that I need out cut out for um, the track. I'm gonna move on to cutting out all of the other pieces that we're gonna need uh, for this card. So there's a few little pieces that I'm gonna end up cutting out here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stamp, I'm gonna make a red door for this card. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stamp um, my barn door from the barn door set. And I'm just going to stamp that out. Now on one of the cards, I actually stamped straight on our wood textures um, DSP paper. So just consider all the different colors of wood grain that is in that package of DSP. And there's a lot of possibilities for doors, okay? Um, you wanna pull in this framelit here from the framelit set and you're gonna run that through your Big Shot. And again, I've already pre-done that for you so you don't have to listen to the Big Shot or um, see it kind of shaking the table. So there is my door all ready to go. So I'm gonna put that aside. So we now have our door, we've got our track and now you're gonna to need to have some hardware. So I cut out all from black I ran one of these, which is um, the, um, the track, I guess, across the top, or the rod. I ran two of these little pieces. And what that is going to give you is, let's see here, I got them all cut out. So I was like a hardware store this morning. I'm cutting out all of these little tiny pieces for all of the cards. So there is the two little pieces that you need for up top. And then there is one little piece that actually cuts out the handle. So there it is there, there's the little handle. So you're gonna need a handle, you're gonna need two little rollers, and you're gonna need a rod. So I went ahead and cut those out of black. So those are ready to go. I'll put that aside there. And then to decorate this door, I really love this rod iron feature that is also in the framelit. So I just cut that out in black. I'm kind of going for a more kind of rustic-y look for this one. So um, those are the pieces that I wanted to bring in. All right, so we have got all of those pieces. Now, the next thing I have to decide is what I want to have when I open and close that door. What sayings I want. So to do this, I cut a piece of paper that is, uh, let's see here, it is four inches uh, long by just over two and a quarter high. And basically what you do is you want to have a piece of paper that's gonna sit right in between those two tracks, okay? You don't want it too far over because you want when, when it's going from, let me just grab my door here, when it's going from one side to the other, you don't see um, the pieces hanging out on the other sides. So it's gonna um, go back and forth really clean and you're gonna stamp something on one side and you can stamp something on another. So for the cards 
that I've made. I did a lot of features from the barn door set, but I want to show you that you can bring in other stamp sets. Think of all the other stamp sets that you have. You could have balloons on one side and then you could have a happy birthday or you could have a crazy critter like I did the toucan, but you could do you could do a little piggy on one side. You could do one of those little dogs. We have all sorts of different options that you could use. I am going to go into the petal palette and I'm going to pull out this adorable little bird and then I love the saying right here that says life is so much better with you in it. So I am going to use those two things for my card. Now I'm going to grab um, a red ink pad. I thought I already had it. Okay, now I've got it and I want to just have a pop of color on one side. So I'm going to do the bird here in black and I'm going to do the saying in red. So when you're positioning, what you want to make sure that you are doing is you are keeping the two items that you're stamping close to the edge that you're working on. So I'm going to put this really close over to this edge, just like that. I love that bird. Then I'm going to, when I do my saying here, I'm going to make sure that this saying is fairly close to this side, like that. Perfect. That is not the straightest. You know what? I got to flip it. There's two sides to every paper. And actually, I really like this side with the exposed wood grain. So I'm going to see if I can do it better here. That's much better. Okay. Give me a little birdie on this side. There we go. Okay. So we have got one little bird and we have got our same. Okay. Now where this is going to go is it's going to get glued into the center of your two little tracks. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm just setting up all the little pieces that we need before we actually do the mechanical part of our card, which is the sliders. Okay, I want to kind of get everything else out of the way. So I have got that on there. Now, when you are putting this on, I want you to make sure that you still have the smaller edge on the bottom and the wider edge on the top. That's important because otherwise you just put your piece on upside down, okay? So keep that in mind. Always keep the wider edge up at the top, okay? Now having said that, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to glue my little rod that I've got. I'm going to use a little bit of my Tombow glue. Let's see here, just a little tiny bit. And I'm going to glue that across the top. Now I'm going to put it uh, probably about halfway or about a quarter inch up from that top track. That actually looks about good. Perfect. I'm going to put that on there just like that. It's looking good already. Now I'm going to decorate up my door. I'm going to place this little wrought iron piece on the center of my door. And again, I'm just going to add just a little bit. Should have brought over my actual my fine tip glue, but this is working just fine. And you know what? For the big double door, I did it like this. I'm going to go this way, just because I can. All right. So I'm going to put that on there like that. Now, this is where you really get to know glue control because when you do these little tiny pieces, you want to just add the tiniest little bit of glue whoop, on my handle. In fact, some people like to use um, tweezers when you're adding the glue. Here, let me just place it down here first. And they like to put all these little things on with tweezers. There we go one little tiny bit. Now when you're placing this down, 
it's hard to get a hold of it so tiny you want to make sure that you have got in the pattern here let's pull it up a little closer so you can see it in the pattern you have got kind of the three slats of wood there coming to a point and this is where you want that little handle to go you're just going to pop that on and that is going to give you your little door handle isn't that sweet okay all right looks like we are ready to go we have got our door all ready i'm going to put that aside we have got our bird there now we're going to start thinking about making what causes the movement and we're going to bring in those washers and we're going to also bring in our little mini pop dots so you want to start making little tiny little sandwiches and you do that by taking one of your mini Stampin' Dimensions and you take a washer. Now with these washers I found that there is a flat side okay it's also kind of slightly rough and then there's a smoother side that's more rounded see that it's kind of got a rounded edge so I sandwiched the two flatter sides together you want to make sure that stampin mini stampin dimension is in the middle okay covering the little hole but you want to also make sure it's in the middle because that's going to make it slide smoother okay and you're going to take one and you're going to sandwich it onto the other and you are going to end up with a little roll like that okay so you are going to create four of those so I've already gone ahead and created all four all the same by sandwiching them together again there's one little dimension in the middle okay and what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and you're just going to just pop those into the track so you can kind of pop it in on one side and then feed it into the other and see how that rolls back and forth Isn't that awesome and then you can go ahead and start it by putting it on one side and then kind of clicking it in and there's two we're gonna do the next one click it in there's three so now we've got three rolling around in there and one more so you need two on the top and two on the bottom okay so once you have them um, in the track they should roll nice and smooth because you put those stamping dimensions right in the center they should be good to go okay now what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to attach our actual door to the rollers so to do that you want to bring in some glue dots so you're gonna need a few of these glue dots And you're going to put two on each washer so uh, well you'll see what I ended up doing is placing one right across from the other and you want to make sure that when you're doing this that they don't go over the edge so see that there's one and then two okay so you want to go ahead and do that on all four of them So if you, some people like, again, like to use tweezers. For me, I just do everything with my good old fingers here. So this takes a little bit of time, but I think that if you had one little glue dot in there, if you were to try and put it in the middle, it would sink into the washer a little bit and then it wouldn't stick the door to it very well. Okay? So I've got all my glue dots on those washers. Now, key thing is going to be you want to separate the sets. I'm calling one top, one bottom a set. You want to separate those sets of washers. Okay? You want to roll one set all the way over to the edge. And then you're going to take your door and you're going to hold it over top. And you want to make it so you don't see those washers okay but they're just at the very very edges of the door so they're just within that corner like right underneath there okay then 
roll these ones all the way over to this side and you want to slide your door across and just have it so again they're just tucked underneath the corner you can't see them but they're underneath there and just press it right on there okay now this is going to slide back and forth isn't that awesome okay so there you've got your door on there it's sliding but you need to attach it to the base of your card so this is where you want to make sure that those sliders aren't going to have any um, thing come in the way like if you were to just attach this to your card these sliders would actually go against your card and then it would prevent it from sliding so now what you want to do is this is where you bring in your foam adhesive strips and you want to pull one of these guys off someone said earlier in the class that um, one of these actually fits perfect to go on either side of the track so each um, strip of it will do on either side and that's what you want to do you're wanting to um, use the strips let's see here and you're wanting to attach them top and bottom there we go top and bottom on either side of the track okay so again I'm gonna pull this one in and put a little piece on the top of here and what this is doing is this is making a little alleyway that will not be disturbed when your track or when your um, your door is going back and forth so nothing's going to prevent anything from pressing up against these and stopping them from rolling okay now because this piece was down quite close to the bottom because remember we had to have um, one of our tracks down closer to the bottom of the card so that we have room for our rod at the top that one is fairly close to the edge can you see that it is fairly close to the edge okay and that's what you want okay now we're just going to peel this because we have all this um, adhesive strips on the back there is significant amount of or sufficient enough stickiness to now stick this onto the base of your card and you won't have to worry about it coming off that will be enough adhesive okay so I'm gonna make sure my card is the right way not upside down and I'm going to center it I'm gonna press it on oh, this is so awesome I love that bird let's have a look on the other side look at that perfect oh, so good okay so there you have your little door piece now what I'm gonna do is I have to just attach my little um, rollers so for this it is an illusion of it rolling on the track so you want to attach it just by the very um, edge of this so where you're putting your glue is right above that little hole and you want to line it up so that the round roller piece is sitting right over top of that rod can you see that so that when it is moving back and forth it looks like it's rolling across it okay then you do the same with the other one we're almost done so again a little bit of adhesive oh hold on there we go and I'm going to put that on there like that. Good. I got a little white glue on the back of there, but that's going to dry nice and clear. So I don't have to worry about that. Okay. So there you have your door on your track. And there you have it. There is your slider door card. As simple as that. So the main thing is, is make sure that you have all of the supplies that you're going to need. Make sure you have those mini dimensions, um, those adhesive strips, and the right side, wa right size washer. I know that when people are used to making kind of like sliding cards like that, that they would sometimes use pennies, is what we used to use, right? 
Now, the problem with that is that the pennies would actually be too large when they're going along the track for the one on top, and you would actually see the penny around the top and off the side of the door. So that's why for this, washers um, work best because you need that size. Now, if you want it, you could, we were talking about this today in class, just alternate uses for the pieces that you get. So it would be easy enough if you have a card front, and let me just grab one here. Let's pretend this is a card front. If you wanted, you could place just a single track. You could use the same piece and you could place a single track on and cut it out, out of the middle of a card front. And then you could stamp you know, whether it's a little birdie or how about those adorable uh, panda bears, the uh, panda party, those uh, celebration pandas, and you could actually have one attached and it could roll across your card, which would be super cute. When it's that type of um, track that you're making, it doesn't matter. Um, you don't have to worry about something being on the edge, so you could easily use just a penny or larger washers would be fine. But for the door, because the washers are so cloth, or the little mechanisms are so close to the edges, these small little washers I find work perfect. Okay, so there you have it. We have got a few different samples. This one here has a little wreath on it. Again, that's the wreath that comes with the barn door set. And these are the great little um, sayings that come with it as well. So may your troubles be less and your blessings be more and nothing but happiness come through your door. I thought that was pretty cool, okay? And then for this one, there's also a little hanging tag in the stamp set here um, that you can use for a little hello. So that's also cute. And it has all the matching framelets that go along with that, okay? So there is my barn door for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. It's kind of a more rustic take on it with the bird and kind of the rod iron. Again, if you need any of these supplies, you can head on over to my online store and you can order right now using the host code. Um, before you go though, I want to show you new celebration items that are going to be released on the 16th. So remember, if you are ordering and your order is over $60 you get a celebration item for free um, there's two different levels now we have $60 level and we have $120 level so um, these are the brand new celebration items that are coming out on the 16th I've got a sample of them here so I will show them to you um, but we have got this one I don't have right now but this is a nice little birthday set that you can do backgrounds with um, but these papers are beautiful and they have a bundle stamp set and a new dynamic texture. So it is the basket weave. I'm going to show it to you. Okay, you guys have to see these up front because they are fabulous. So this is the new basket weave and this is actually the stamp set that you would get. So you get both the dynamic texture and the stamp set at the 120 level. This is one of the beautiful papers from the springtime foil papers that are included as one of the new celebrations. So I'm just going to open it up so you can see these quickly before I go because you know what? These are amazing. You can actually do a few different things with them. Okay, I'm just going to put this aside. I'm going to show you the patterns first. So that's one of them. And this one, I don't know, it's kind of hard. Oh, there you can actually see the rose gold. See how that's rose gold? That is a new color for the foil. So they all have foil on them. There is this one silver and gold with the leaves. This, again, rose gold with the polka dots. That's one of my favorites. And then a beautiful silver stripe. So, I mean, you can use these papers as they are, and they are gorgeous. But you can also color them if you wanted with your blends and your stamp and write markers you can color them and then you could cut them out and use them as focal points you can also brayer them or spritz them this is just a strip that i used a foam brayer and some island indigo ink on and i was able to transform it into that beautiful color blue and um 
the nice thing is the ink is going to resist any of the foil on there. So you're going to get that foil still there and the beautiful color in the background. So imagine the possibilities. So again, those are some new ones for celebration starting on the 16th. So don't forget to pick out those celebration items when you place your orders. Okay, so that's what I've got for you today. I hope you guys really enjoyed this barn door. I hope you have some a lot of fun with it. And um, yeah, get creative. Put different things behind the doors. Okay, so I will see you guys next time. I will be doing um, the double barn door at some point as well. So you can look forward to that. And thanks for spending some time um, with me today. All right, have a good day, guys. Bye.